How we doing? Welcome to another Tuesday night edition of History in a Drink. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about black and tans. And black and tans go back to the Irish Civil War back in 1819 to 1921. So we're going to talk about that, but let's make one first. So Excellent. The traditional black and tan is made with Guinness and harps. All right. So, so which Guinness is a draft. Well, it's a stout. A stout, I'm sorry. And the type we that I picked of it is in the can because it has the nitrogen in it. And it when you get it out of the tap, normally it's a nitrogen tap. So that makes it that velvety taste to it. And that's what makes the nitrogen beer so awesome. Okay. So when we open it. Now, stout is a very dark beer. Whoa, holy smoke. It's uh, all over the place. Yeah. So the first half of your glass. And we're using our 99 bottles glasses today. And you fill it about halfway up with the harps. And then you have to have your special spoon. We have special spoons. All right. So we made ours ourselves. And it is just bending the spoon so that when by, by the way, Frank's wife, Jen, she's just seeing this spoon for the very first time. Jen, and the last time. Jen, ignore, here ignore the this. Bar. Ignore that we bent this spoon here for you because it's special because it mounts onto the top of the glass there like that. And what it does is it sits below the glass and so that the Guinness, when you're pouring it in, will stay onto and create that layered texture Right. So if you remember your high school chemistry. Oh, go a little higher, go a little higher. Look at that. Oh. It deals with the liquid density. I don't know. I teach history. I don't teach chemistry. Exactly. But we can see there that, that separation between the black, the Guinness, and the tan, the harp. Now, we'll talk about that in a minute, why we have those two different colors there. Now, I'm going to make a different one. And it's based on recommendations by Mark at 99 Bottles. And what he suggested... Mr. Mark Tuchman, tip off to you, sir. What he suggested is using the um, I, uh, Dogfish Head IPA 120 and their Worldwide Stout. And in looking this up online, this is called Heaven in Hell. So just like everything else that we do here in America... I'm going to bastardize something from Europe and make it our own. All right. Excellent. So we start once again with the lager, with the lighter beer. So you have half a glass of that. For some people, stout is a little bit too much sometimes. Hmm. So, and the thing is, in actuality, it's just the grains that go into the beer. It's usually not necessarily a heavier beer than a regular ale or a regular lager. Um, it's just the dark colors, I think, that scares a lot of people. And by the way, if anyone at home needs a spoon like this, if they can contact Jennifer, she'd be happy to provide more out of her uh, silverware drawer, I think, to uh, to make more of these spoons. So You're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so once again, we have Frank's Black and Tan, the American version of it, with is a dogfish. And uh, let's Dogfish Head IPA. Yeah. And once again, we can still see that great, cool separation. Yours kind of blended a little bit together, but yep. the, the harps and the Guinness blended together. As you drink it, then they blend together. Our studio audience tonight with us is drinking as well, so cheers to you all. Cheers. Let's give it a little taste here. God, that is wonderful. Oh, that's delicious. Now, here's the difference, too, is Sean's drink is going to be a, maybe about 5 6%. Mine is about 18%. So, Sean here, he's already been having a few I'm, in his typical Irish fashion. Correct. We, uh, you know, so we started, we started a little I've got to catch up. So, I have to get and have a little bit. This will allow uh, him to catch up much faster. Exactly. Yeah. So, let's get on to the uh, Irish Civil War. So, um, when I was doing my research on this, it was really interesting to see where this idea of the black and tan came from. And the black and tan came from the uniforms of the Royal... Irish Constabulary, which was the police force that was um, hired by the British to um, work in Ireland. And initially they tried to hire the Irish, but after the war, they were having a hard time getting... This is after World War One. So after this, World War One, exactly. Is the, this is the early 1900s. Yes. Yeah, so it actually, yeah. so what happens is in the election of 1819 in Ireland, 
the Irish Republican Party wins in a landslide. Mm -hmm. And not 1919. 1918. 1918, not 1819. Oh, yeah. Dyslexic. We're, we're, we're drinking a little bit already. That's right. So, so in 1918, mm -hmm. the um, Irish Republican Party wins the, the landslide election. Exactly. Yep. And they decide that they are going to create their own country and break away from England, like Canada had, yep. Australia had at that time. Now the, now, the IRA, too, even the Republican Army, too, it's pretty much we've got politics here, but we also have a little bit of religion given into that as well. So the IRA was basically more of the of the Catholic side right. of things and the Catholic Irish versus the more Protestant Irish, which were teamed up more with the Church of England. Exactly. And this goes back way far. Yeah. When you look at Ireland, Ireland was really the first area that the English colonized. Mm -hmm. And... The English are brutal colonizers, plain and simple. And when we look at here in the United States and look at the treatment of Native Americans, it is just horrific compared to other nations. And so when we look at it, they learned all their practices from um, subjugating the Irish. And so you have this history of over 400, 500 years of brutality against the Irish people by yeah. the British government. And when they finally get their independence or this opportunity for it, it turns into a guerrilla war. It's not an outright revolution like we think of in so many other places around the world. Mm -hmm. And especially when you think of at that time period, the, a huge revolution is going on in Russia uh, with the communist revolution. And so there's this fear that communism is going to come to these countries like uh, England or France and overthrow the governments that are there. So, but the problem with a, a guerrilla war is the Irish Republican army, excuse me, did not wear uniforms yeah. at all. So how do you know who the bad guys are? When you and and who's just the regular civilians? Because it's really the, the, the same. And that's, and that's really what they did. Exactly. But that's where, the British side came in. So the British, they had regular forces there, military forces, but then they had the RIC, the um, Royal Irish Constabulary. And they were basically a, an army, but also to a police force. Basically. Correct. They were a police yeah. force, more like a quasi military unit. Sure. And the um, standard issue uniform was a very dark green top, which is left over from World War One. Correct. Yep. But as they got more and more recruits for it, and they were coming from England, and they were unemployed soldiers who had fought in World War I. So, they, so we have English soldiers coming back from World War I, don't really have anything to their name. All of a sudden, the government says, hey, you know what? We can use you to go over here and be a police force, basically, for us in Ireland who are having this uprising, and we're going to basically pay you and give you a job. Exactly. So over 10,000 of them go and join this in that two-year period. Yep. Now, what happens is they don't have the green bottoms. So what they use is their trousers, the khaki trousers, which are standard for the British Army. And so in the, in normal light, when you're in a building and stuff like that, yep. the green tops it's look very black. very dark, look black. And the bottoms are the tan, all right? So that's where this idea of the black and tan comes from. So it's actually a really derogatory term for the quasi-military police force that was so brutal against the Irish in the Irish Civil well, War. And, and also, too, so basically during this time, so the Black and Tans came in. They were British citizens yep. that basically they kind of gave free reign to. You guys do whatever you need to do to keep these folks in check. Yeah. So whether that's arson, whether it's beating innocent civilians, whether that's whatever, I mean, that that's basically they had the – the wherewithal to do whatever they want without any consequences at all. Exactly. And they even called it when the um, constabulary would go into different cities that they were sacking the cities or pillaging the cities. And they, in 1919 uh, and 1920, they went all around Southern Ireland and did this in lots of different cities. Now, Southern Ireland, too, is traditionally more Catholic, Catholic. than Northern Ireland. Exactly. So also, too, as far as England is going, this is where they're looking at, you know, so, hey, this is where we have less sway in our government. So, you know, Northern Ireland um, 
and the Belfast and areas up there was a little bit more um, Protestant. So they actually had a little bit more sway and the Irish people were a little bit more behind. Whereas Southern Ireland with the Catholic, whether that's Dublin, whether it's Cork, whether that's whatever, this was the area that they were a little bit more focused on keeping under control. Yeah. And the funny part about it is when we think of the black and tan too, a, a newspaper reporter from the, um, what was it? The Limerick Echo, all right? He that doesn't sound very Irish at all. <laughs> well, that's what, what it was called, and the newspaper that he was writing for. He said when these soldiers or the this um, constables were getting off the train that they were looked like they were going on a hunt, all right? It was called the Scar Tree Hunt, and they looked like the dogs that were used, the black and tans of the carry beagle the black and town hound dogs exactly interesting so because when we think of the um british foxhound for going and doing these kind of hunts they're the tricolor white black and brown but the carry beagle which is the only um scent dog from ireland yep. was only black and tan and so he said they look like a bunch of dogs and so again that derogatory term sure. for them so there's a lot of animosity between the civilians and the IRA in Southern Ireland. Exactly. Against these soldiers that are basically coming in the country that are basically free hired to come in and just kind of had free reign to do whatever they wanted to do. Yeah. And ultimately what's going to happen here is Ireland and England, because of the chaos that's going on after the end of World War I, this is the time of the influenza pandemic around the world where 50 to 70 million people are going to die roughly from that. Um, sound familiar? Yeah, yeah it does a sound bit, a little yeah. bit familiar. Um, so as we look at it, I think they have better leadership. Than yeah, now, probably but, so. <laughs> so what happens is ultimately the British are going to create a treaty with the Irish in 1920. And what will happen is the counties in the north will have the option of staying with England because that's where the huge, around Belfast is where the huge yeah. Protestant population is. And so you have the bulk of the Catholics down there. So in the vote- Down, down in Southern Ireland. Correct. Yeah. So in that vote, those seven or six um, counties stay as part of England. And hence they divide England or, or hence Ireland into a Southern Ireland and Northern Ireland. Exactly. So. When you look at it, the Republic of Ireland is everything that is in the south, minus those six counties in um, Northern Ireland, and they are still part of the British Empire today. And that is where, when we look at the conflict that's going to happen, that continues with dealing with the Irish and the, and the English, it's going to happen in Northern Ireland. Yeah. And we still see that all the way through the really the 1990s with um, car bombings and killings and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so the, the story never really ends and it keeps going yeah. just like all kinds of civil wars that we see around sure. the world or these long seated hatreds between two groups. So tonight our drink, we chose to do the black and the tan so we could give you a little bit about Irish history. Yeah. Um, I think when we look at this, it, it, shows us a lot that's really going on and still some of the things that are going on today and it helps Absolutely. us understand why some of the hatreds um still exist because if you call an englishman an irishman or vice versa yeah you're gonna get a punch in the mouth well right? and also and also too you know it even goes down to which something we may talk about later is you know even irish whiskey which is those we have some, two different brands of irish whiskey there's tullamore dew which is a very northern Ireland, that's a Belfast type of whiskey. The better one. Uh, versus what I like a little bit better, which is the Jameson's, which is out of Dublin, which is a very Southern. And if you go into a Southern bar and order Tullamore Dew, you don't do that. And vice versa, if you go into a Northern uh, Irish bar and order Jameson's, that's not done either. So it's, it's amazing that in this particular case, it's actually religion that's dividing them. Exactly. We see in the United States a lot of division with race um mm -hmm. in canada it's language of all things so you have you know basically french versus english which is huge so you know we see all these divisions among in, in countries and sometimes depending on where you're at determines on what it is based upon exactly which is, which is crazy 
Exactly. So I hope you enjoyed our talk today. Um, but more importantly, I hope you're enjoying your black and tan. Absolutely, um, guys. So we will be back next week. Um, do you know what your schedule is? Oh, we're a Tuesday night. We're ready right. to roll. Next, right. next so, few Tuesdays, we're going to be on. All right. Awesome. So we'll see you next Tuesday. Yeah. Um, if you get the opportunity, please stop into 99 Bottles. Uh, say hello to Mark and tell him you saw us on uh, here on Absolutely. Facebook. And pick up some really awesome beers that they have and now, available. Does Mark have those? He has the Worldwide Stout okay. um, available if you want that. But Which is fantastic. He can give you a whole bunch of other recommendations on pale ales that he might have yep. to go with it. Um, it was just interesting, that whole heaven and hell idea um, with this. And this is pretty good. And I think I'm going to have a really good time drinking the rest of these. Absolutely. And, so, I, and I like the more traditional, you know, the, the, the Guinness and the Harp is, is fantastic as well. And that's if you go into... Any bar throughout Ireland, you're going to see that in both the north and the south. Because Guinness is is well known throughout. So. Exactly, and actually, Guinness now has a brewery in Maryland, in Virginia. I believe so. Exactly in the United States here. So and so you can go up there and I think that was told to us by the, the Zinsmeisters. So yeah. shout out to the Zinsmeisters. Hey guys, how you doing? Yeah. Also, another shout out to all those kids who are graduate supposed to be graduating this week that aren't. You are. And yep. we're proud of you, and congratulations. 100%, absolutely, guys. All right, so we'll see you next week. And uh, are, are we doing, what are we What are we going to do next week? Do we have I, something kind of different? I think what we're going to do is we're going to put a poll on for you guys to come on here and do it. And we're going to list three different topics. And then whatever gets the most votes, that's what we're going to do as our topic for next week. The amazing thing about history and alcohol together is that there's so much variety in either one of them we exactly. can tell stories about all kinds of crazy stuff so take a look and see we'd love to hear what you guys think about it and uh we'll uh we'll take care of our audience you know there was another thing jack your yep. son was yep. telling us that there is some desire for merchandise you know what i've had a couple of people asking that as well so uh, we may actually take a look at if any of you guys are watching this and would love uh you know, a history and a drink shirt or another thing as well. We may be, or a glass. Maybe yeah. We're providing that as well. So keep an eye out for that. Um, let us know if you'd like. We can get them shipped uh, corona free and that will be all good. All right. Have a great night.